What is up guys, Morton here from SteamFirst.com with a review for Sniper Elite 3, a third person shooter with an emphasis on stealth, developed by Rebellion and released June 27th, 2014 on Steam for $50. Sniper Elite 3 is pretty unique in today's market. Most shooters, both first person and third person, you can basically just run around firing nonstop and kill everyone in front of you, and if you take damage, you can hide behind a wall until you automatically recover your health. But that isn't the case in Sniper Elite 3. Not at all. As you can tell by the title, the focus of this game is on sniping, although that isn't the only thing you'll be doing, but it requires you to think and plan ahead. There might be 15 enemies in an area, and if you snipe one, they'll all know your location and go after you. But if you carefully walk through and use quiet melee executions on a couple, and use the silenced pistol on a couple, and then back out and snipe the rest, you'll have a much better chance of surviving. But this is exactly what I loved about the game. It's very open, there's tons of options, and no right or wrong way to do things. There are countless buildings and terrain to hide behind and snipe people from, but if you don't want to do that, you can use your assault rifle and just run through everything. It's far more dangerous, and you're far more likely to die, but you could do it if you really wanted to. There are lots of optional missions, and tons of things hidden on every mission, like war diaries that have more story information. It's really interesting, because if you were to just play through as fast as possible, it probably wouldn't take very long, but with all the optional things, it means you have to kill a lot more people than you normally would, and go way out of your way for some of the things. So it makes you think a lot more about what way is optimal, to make sure you can get out safely. As for the actual mechanics of the game, they're pretty solid. There's a lot of difficulty settings, and you can even customize them, which is really nice. For example, you might really like the bullet drop mechanic, where you have to actually aim your shots differently based on how far away you are, but you might not like dying in two shots. So you can make your own difficulty that has the difficult bullet mechanics, but the enemies themselves aren't that strong. The controls are great, and the only annoying part is opening the radial menu in order to swap your items. You can change weapons with mouse wheel, which is fine, but to change from dynamite to bandages, for example, requires you to open a radial menu, and then you have to pick from there. It's not a massive complaint, but it's kind of annoying to deal with. Another thing I like a lot about the campaign is you can and should save at any point. There are very few places where the game will automatically save, mainly just whenever you complete a big objective, but in a stealth game like this, one mistake at any point can easily get you killed, so saving often is very important. The downside of this is if you forget to save, you can easily lose 10 or more minutes of progress in some spots, but it also opens more opportunities. Since the game is so open, you can try something, and if it doesn't work, you can just reload and try something else without wasting a whole lot of time. You can select your loadout prior to every mission, and you unlock guns and attachments by leveling up, which goes by pretty quickly. You gain experience from killing people or finding any of the hidden things, and you gain bonus experience depending on how you accomplish tasks. For example, if you shoot an explosive barrel and kill someone, you'll get more points than if you just shot them. Unfortunately, even at max level you only have a handful of guns to choose from, unless you buy extra DLC that will unlock more. More on the DLC later though, because that deserves its own section in this review. The overall gameplay in this game is really fun. From the sniping mechanics to the stealth aspects, everything works well, and being able to make your own difficulty means that whether you're amazing at this type of game, or you've never played anything like it before, you can still have a lot of fun with it. Gameplay gets a 4.5 out of 5, and the only complaints I have are the lack of variety in the weapons and the clunky radial menu, but they're minor complaints really, and the core gameplay itself is very fun. Visually, the game looks really good. A big feature of the Sniper Elite series is the X-Ray shots, where if you snipe someone, the game will follow the bullet in slow motion as it enters the target's body and show an X-Ray of where it hits. It's really unique, and they did a great job with it. Obviously, this is pretty gory, but it looks really cool, and it's quite detailed. Although one could say it happens far too often since you kill hundreds of people throughout the course of the game, and it does the whole slow motion thing over half the time. All of the terrain and everything looks good as well. Every once in a while, though, some of the graphics have some issues, such as dead bodies sliding around or getting stuck in terrain. It's pretty rare, though, that something like that will happen, and it's usually pretty funny when it does. Overall, the graphics get a 4.5 out of 5. There's really not much to complain about other than a couple of minor issues every once in a while. Much like the graphics, the sound was also quite good. The main character's voice acting was good. Well, he sounded completely generic with a voice that sounds like he never stopped smoking cigarettes, but that's what they were going for when they designed the character, so I really can't fault the voice actor for that. The sound effects for explosions and gunshots are all quite good as well, although I'm not a gun expert, so I can't say for sure they sound completely realistic. Sound gets a 4 out of 5. The story takes place during World War II. You play as Carl Fairborn and attempt to uncover the Nazis' plans in North Africa. The story is pretty forgettable, though the setting being in Africa is at least somewhat unique. There are war diaries you can pick up, but don't feel that you need to collect every single one to understand the story, because you don't. They add a little bit, but it's not really anything important. The story is told mainly through cutscenes, and there's only a couple of characters throughout the whole game that ever get introduced. The story basically only exists because they needed a reason for you to be killing Nazis, and it's not something that's going to be revolutionary by any means. The story gets a 2.5 out of 5. It's really quite bland and generic, 
but it's there and they do at least make some effort to tell a story, so that's a plus. As for replayability, there's actually quite a lot if it's what you're looking for. Not only could you replay the campaign searching for all the hidden things and doing all the optional missions, but there's also a co-op horde type mode with endless waves of enemies, a co-op mode called Overwatch where one person is the sniper and the other person navigates around completing whatever the objective is, and there's also multiplayer with modes like Team Deathmatch or Distance King where you need to get kills from far away. And this all sounds great, but it's honestly kind of underwhelming. First off, the survival mode doesn't really work well for this type of game. Surviving against waves of enemies is great in Call of Duty or Gears of War, where you recover health automatically and you're basically a walking tank, but in a game like this, when you get to the higher waves there are just too many enemies. And a problem with both that mode and the Overwatch mode is that there's no matchmaking, so if you don't have a friend that owns the game, you can't do co-op at all. Another issue is that for both co-op modes, there are only two maps, at least until you buy the DLC, Again, more on the whole DLC thing in a minute. So even if you do have another friend who owns the game, you'll probably finish both Overwatch missions in an hour or so, then play the survival mode like once, and that'll be it. The multiplayer is also pretty disappointing, because you play as a sniper, you basically just sit back, waiting for somebody to be stupid enough to move from their cover, and then kill them before they can react. Think of your favorite shooter game, then think of how frustrating it is to instantly die to a sniper from across the map when you had no idea he was even there, and then multiply that by 10 because everybody is sniping and that's basically the multiplayer for Sniper Elite 3. It's not bad, it's just not all that fun. There's no close quarters action, and everybody basically just sits in their spot waiting until somebody walks into their line of fire. Replayability gets a 3.5 out of 5. There's quite a lot of options there, and with multiplayer 2 if you enjoy it, you can obviously get a ton of value out of it. But the lack of matchmaking for the co-op missions, and the fact that there's only a couple of maps to choose from, is a pretty big deal. Now, I need to talk about the DLC for this game, and why I have such a big problem with it. Sniper Elite 3 is a $50 game, and with it you get 8 or 9 story missions, 4 sniper rifles, 4 submachine guns, 3 pistols, 2 co-op survival missions, and 2 co-op overwatch maps. And that's it. But you can get more missions, guns, and maps by buying the DLC. And I have no problem with DLC, but I do have a major problem with the fact that they've already released 6 DLCs in under a month. This stuff was done, it could have been included, but they left it out purposely so they could sell it extra, and I understand it's a business, and that's fine. But when your $50 game is already pretty lacking in content, excluding things just so you can sell it later is a pretty big problem as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, with all that said, Sniper Elite 3 is a fun game, and although it isn't very long, there's some things you can do after you complete it, especially if you have a friend to play co-op with, and especially especially if you're willing to pay out more money for the DLC. The gameplay itself is quite fun, and there's something oddly, and disturbingly, satisfying about seeing your bullet in slow motion impact and destroy somebody's body, which is something you can only get from the Sniper Elite series. Overall, Sniper Elite 3 gets a 4 out of 5. Even though I have a massive problem with the way they handled the DLC for this game, the game itself is fun and an enjoyable experience, and if you're willing to pay for the DLC, I'm sure it will add quite a lot. If you like Sniper Elite V2, you'll very much enjoy Sniper Elite 3, and if you haven't played them before, they're definitely worth checking out.